This week on Tech Wrap, Microsoft unveils the Surface Pro 3 tablet and calls it a laptop replacement. We unbox the Samsung Series 9 Ultra High Def Curved TV. And how fast can you text? With world record hardware in hand, we see if we can find anyone who can break the new texting world record. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap, your weekly source for tech news, gadget reviews, app recommendations, and social media tips. Microsoft unveils a new Surface Pro tablet designed to replace a laptop. Lighter, thinner, but bigger and more powerful than its predecessor, the Surface Pro 3 is crafted for both work and play. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella says, quote, we want products and technologies that enable people to dream and get stuff done. The Surface Pro 3 sports a 12-inch display, weighs about 800 grams, and is slightly more than a third of an inch deep. The tablet still sports the trademark keyboard cover, but is modified so users can tilt it as they wish. It also securely anchors the device while being used, say, on a person's lap. Similar to Samsung's Note Pro, Microsoft's latest tablet also comes with a pen, which can be used to remotely activate the Pro 3 or as your conventional note taker. The Surface Pro 3 will be available in multiple configurations, running the latest fourth generation Intel Core i3, i5, and i7 processors. The i3 base model with 64 gigabytes of storage will be available for pre-order beginning May 21, the starting price of $799. The i5 version will hit the North American market on June 20, while the i7 chip will be available in the US and 26 other countries by the end of August. Who hasn't used Facebook to flirt, whether via a seemingly innocent like on a post or a full-blown series of comments on an album of photos? There's no denying users have taken to the world's largest social network to connect for sex and love. And in an unintentional nod to its other purpose, Facebook is rolling out a new feature that can very well be the biggest flirting tool since the notorious poke. Recently, ask buttons began popping up next to omitted details on users about boxes. Details like where they grew up, where they work, or what schools they attended. No one's really bothered until this week when users reported seeing the ask button appear beside a user's relationship status. If you're brave enough to ask, you will have to send that user a message explaining why you need to know. Of course, if you're asking, an emoji will suffice. The user you're eyeing will be notified and will be given a list of relationship statuses to reply back with. That user may choose to reveal to everyone or to you whether he or she is in a relationship, engaged, or married. But really, the only answer that matters is single. There is no doubt YouTube is the undisputed leader in online video. But live streaming was never one of their strong suits. The leader there is two-year-old startup Twitch, whose one million user strong online gaming platform has elevated online games to the status of spectator sport. A recent report by internet infrastructure company Deepfield puts Twitch in fourth place in terms of peak internet traffic in the US behind Netflix, Google, and Apple, but ahead of Hulu and Facebook. That's why it's no surprise that YouTube is in talks to buy the company for an estimated $1 billion. Both Variety and the Wall Street Journal report the impending acquisition, but with conflicting details about how far along YouTube and Twitch are in negotiations. Both companies remain silent so far, but if the deal pushes through, the acquisition will be the largest for YouTube since it was acquired by Google back in 2006 for $1.6 billion. Barely two weeks before its launch, the LG G3 made another appearance on the tech rumors circuit this week, 
This time, care of notable Twitter leaker, at EvLeaks. Apart from the metallic gray or titanium G3, which appeared on LG's official teaser video last week, two more color variants surfaced, white and gold. The leaked product renders give users a better look at the upcoming device. It appears the LG G3 will bear a striking resemblance to its predecessor, the G2, but with less rounded edges, a slimmer profile, an even thinner bezel, and a metallic back plate. The camera and backside power button also get a makeover. Another phone to come out of the rumor mill this week is the HTC One M8 Prime. Similar to the Samsung Galaxy S5 Prime we reported about last week, photos of the premium HTC One surfaced this week. While we're confused about its less than premium look, the photos reveal what could possibly be an upgraded camera, one that obviously protrudes from the device. For all its awesomeness, the HTC One could benefit from a little more megapixels. While we buy the whole ultra pixel concept, not having at least an 8 megapixel camera is the only flaw in an otherwise top notch device. Want more security from your Samsung smartphone but can't afford the flagship Galaxy S5? Fear not, the Korean tech company is working on a solution for you. According to a report on the Wall Street Journal, Samsung is looking to bring its biometric sensor mobile security system to low-end smartphones. The only biometric security measure on smartphones already out in the market is the fingerprint scanner present on the Samsung Galaxy S5 and Apple's iPhone 5S. The same feature could soon find its way to Samsung's mid-range and low-end smartphones. But Samsung Senior Vice President Ri In-chong says it's not the only security measure in the pipeline. Ri says, quote, we're looking at various types of biometric mechanisms and one of the things that everybody is looking at is iris detection. Hi, I'm Michael Josh from Rappler.com. Today, we're unboxing something bigger than what we're used to, 65 inches to be exact. This is the brand new Series 9 Ultra High Definition Curved TV from Samsung. And because it's a big box, we have some help from Jun and Richard to unbox. Inside the box, aside from this 65-inch uh, TV, are a couple of accessories, a couple of boxes. Uh, what we have over here is their pedestal stand. And um, their pricing for this television hasn't been announced yet, but it, uh, it's in the hundreds of thousands of pesos. So we do have help setting up the TV today. Now, also inside the box are a couple of things. You have the Samsung uh, accessory kit um, with this um, new, uh, different looking, it's a unconventionally shaped uh, remote control. Uh, also inside the accessory box are a whole range of cables uh, and um, other um, things uh, to use with the TV. And then what you have here, um, which is worth mentioning, is the One Connect box. And basically the One Connect box is, um, this, this is the One Connect and it's basically your interface box. So the television, of course, if you mount it somewhere or you, um, all the I.O. or the input output or all the different ports are no longer on the TV itself, but on the one connect box. So as you can see, there are a range of connectivity options. You have the antenna, you have a couple of um, HDMI ports, um, one with uh, MHL for the mobile high definition link, a LAN uh, cable for internet connectivity, and of course you have the audio out. Um, audio out ports. The One Connect box, like I showed you earlier, has all the different ports and that connects to the TV via the uh, One Connect cable. Now, uh, just a word of caution, uh, as you can see, um, the both sides do look the same, but they are labeled differently. One should go to the TV, the other should go to the box and we're told that you have to be a little bit careful and you shouldn't, you don't want to um, uh, plug uh, the cord into the wrong socket because it could damage your hardware. But um, the best practice for a curved TV, if you do get one, is to take it out of the box and, and, and uh, rest it on these foams that come with the box. Um, it's not recommended to, uh, because of its curved shape, to rest it on a table because you don't want to put too much pressure uh, on the middle um, 
the middle part of this TV. It's not a bendable TV, although there are bendable or flexible um, uh, TVs, UHD TVs from Samsung. Um, they're just not out in the market just yet. This is a built-in camera. Um, this TV is a smart TV, and so this will respond to air gestures, which use which you can use to control the uh, various functionality of this smart TV. One of the benefits, supposedly, of getting a curved TV is uh, being able to immerse yourself in the video that you're watching, the content that you're watching. And um, this TV from Samsung has a feature called Auto Depth uh, Enhancer, which is supposed to um, enhance the depth of um, whatever video you're watching to really give you a feel that you're inside um, the movie and not just watching from a distance. And that was our unboxing of the Series 9 UHD Curved TV from Samsung. How fast can you text? While most of us can tap or swipe pretty fast even without a physical keyboard, the world record belongs to Brazilian teenager Marcel Fernandes Filho. Filho smashed the Guinness World Record recently set by a Seattle teenager that was a few months ago using the new WordFlow keyboard on Windows Phone 8.1. Philo, using a Samsung Galaxy S4 running a custom keyboard app, Flexi. Philo typed two sentences, the razor-toothed piranhas of the genera Serasalmus and Pytocentrus, I hope I pronounced that right, are the most ferocious freshwater fish in the world. In reality, they seldom attack a human. He did this in 18.19 seconds, which seems really achievable. So we set out on a challenge this week to see if we could find anyone who could come close to his world record. Okay, so here's the text that uh, we want people to type out. It's the uh, same text used to set the world record. Speaking of the world record, it's been broken twice this year. First on a Lumia phone running Windows 8.1 with their new uh, keyboard. We have that here. And again, very recently on a Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, running the third-party keyboard Flexi. We have that here too. Let's see if we can find anyone who can break the world record. These are the Rappler interns. We've given them the text so they can practice. We'll see if any of them can come close to the world record. This is Mara from Ateneo. I've got my timer ready. She's ready. She's using an iPhone 5. Are you ready, Mara? Yeah, I am. Okay, here we go. This is Kevin from Aquinas University in Nagaspi. He's going to use um, Windows Phone 8.1 uh, and Nokia Luna 630. Are you ready? This is Toby. He's using the world record holder, the Galaxy S4, using the Flexi keypad. Uh, are you ready? Yep. Okay, he's from UP Diliman. Ready, go. This is Marga. She's from La Salle. As you can see, she's an Apple lover. She has an iPhone, a MacBook Air. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. She has she has a the text right in front of her computer. So um, here we go. Ready, three, go. Okay, so 18 seconds can't be that tough. Uh, as much as I love terrorizing interns, I think I have to be fair and try it myself. So um, I've, I've practiced a couple of times. Let's see how, how fast I can do. Okay, 25 seconds is not so bad, but it's still seven seconds off the world record. Not as easy as we thought. Uh, now, if you're interested uh, to try out this challenge, uh, we're going to post um, this entire text 
on Rappler.com. Uh, there are a variety of different keypads out there. Of course, if you're an iPhone user, you're just stuck with one. But if you're on Android, there are a host of different uh, third-party keyboard options. There's Swipe, there's Swift Key. If you're on Samsung, they also have a Swipe keyboard available. And of course, um, Flexi, uh, which is the world record holder. And then if you're on Windows Phone, they also have this amazing um, Swipe keyboard. So go, uh, go online, uh, check out the text, uh, try out the challenge, and let us know how far or how close you can get to the world record. And that was Tech Wrap. For the latest tech news, visit rappler.com slash technology. Follow rappler.com on social media. Join our conversation online. And if you have any tech questions, send us emails. The email address is techwrap at rappler.com. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.